What do you want to be when you grow up? My first answer to that question was a princess. Later on, I said artist, and finally, I said writer. Instead, I ended up becoming a teacher. Uh, I've taught here at Sotopolt and currently at Estudain. But eventually, I became the first professional mermaid of Sweden. My name is Linda, and I'm going to tell you about how I turned my hobby into a profession. Which Disney movie came out in 1989? Correct, The Little Mermaid. Being born in 1989, this film had a huge impact on my life. Especially because my parents and I went to Disneyland in 1994, and they had rented a cabin, and there was a TV. They wanted to watch the news. But, unfortunately for them, they were only showing The Little Mermaid on repeat. And I kept re-watching it at, as if it was the first. And my dad still jokes to this day that I was slightly brainwashed by the big mouse himself. And just like my mom, I already loved the water in every form. Oceans, lakes. So this love only grew stronger with this film. I started collecting mermaids, started drawing mermaids from the age of four, until today. And it was my very first cosplay, my childhood heroine, Ariel. So this is where my inspiration comes from. Have you found yours? 2012 was a special year for me. I got my very first tail. It wasn't a great tail, to be honest, and it was pretty cheap and barely swimmable, but it was my first tail. <clears throat> uh, I also went through something special in 2012. I went through my very first breakup. That's why I got my tail, because I wanted to do a mermaid shoot, like I always wanted. And I couldn't stop looking at the pictures. It was the most beautiful and empowered I had ever felt. But what is mermaiding exactly? You wear a mermaid tail, usually out of fabric, and there's a monofin, so you can swim. You use a dolphin kick, and you do this for exercise, recreation, or simply just taking pretty pictures. So I'm about to show you my very first swim as a mermaid. It's not impressive. Um, Please refrain from laughing. Using too much arms, bending the knee way too much. Yeah. Many rookie mistakes. But uh, you have to start somewhere. But where to start? Uh, mermaiding was practically unheard of in Sweden when I started, so I needed to get an idea of how to achieve my dreams. I found this model called SWOT, uh, which is made for analyzing yourself. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I started looking at what are my good, uh, what are my strengths? Well, I'm pretty creative. I can probably create my own outfit. And I'm pretty good with kids. What about weaknesses? Well, I was a bit shy and as you could see, I could improve my swimming technique. What about threats? Would I be able to move around in a tail? And what if people don't take me seriously? Opportunities, maybe I could educate myself to improve my swimming, for example. And I had this dream to get a silicone tail one day. All of the mermaid performers have them. It's the Rolex of the mermaid tails, but they're quite expensive. So I would have to save up. Here you see a mermaid in her natural habitat and uh, studio. This is my first draft of my Marsona mermaid Athera. I had improved the tail a bit and I made seashell bra from actual shells. How do I make the dream come true? I had to start asking myself some questions. Like why, where do I go, how do I get there? If we start with why, 
Well, it makes me happy. And it makes the kids happy. It's my passion. Well, where do I go? I started making a list of future dreams. I started simple to feel that it was achievable and something I could do to get in the right direction. But the rest of them felt fairly far away. I also needed, I, uh, I also knew I needed to look out for opportunities. Because mermaiding is so new in Sweden, I needed to see where it would fit in. I also wanted to be a professional, so I started by making a logo, and then I put it up posters at my local uh, store. This is the first picture of me at my first kids' party, and I'm not sure who's the happiest, if it's me or the kid, uh, but I knew I had found my calling. So how do I do to be the best mermaid I can be? What do I need? Just like any other job, I need the right education and qualifications. So for example, again, as you can see, I needed to improve my swimming technique. So I took a few mermaiding classes in England. I wanted to be able to teach swimming as a mermaid to kids, so I went to Denmark and became a mermaid instructor. Well, the dream is to do aquarium shows, so I started practicing freediving. And today, I have competed in freediving, and my personal best is to hold my breath for three and a half minutes. An opportunity arose, and I took it. It meant going further away from home by myself than I had ever done before. Miss Mermaid International. This is a mermaid contest that takes place in Egypt for two weeks. And I got to be the first Swedish representative, the first Miss Mermaid Sweden. The contest was made up of different parts, such as creating your own top, swimming distance on one breath, posing underwater to the camera. We were also doing catwalking uh, on the catwalk with fancy dresses. Sweden made it to the top 10, but that wasn't even the best part. Now I have mermaid friends all over the world. So wherever I go, I have someone to swim with and hang out with. This is also where I met my British mermaid friends, who introduced me to this. Soon you will realize you're tired, you're freezing, 
and you don't know where to eat, sleep, you will probably give up very quickly. So if you take on too much too fast, you might not see it through. <clears throat> Instead, you should break down your goal into smaller, more achievable, concrete goals. For example, by making a list. That way you can achieve them and tick them off one by one. If we go back to Mount Everest, that probably takes weeks of preparation uh, with weather conditions, finding the right guide, where to decide where to stop, and all of that. But all of those smaller goals will yet get you closer to the top. So never underestimate the importance of small steps. Key number two, vision work. There is something that most athletes do before an important game or important match, and that is to visualize themselves winning. That way it will be easier because they've already done it. And this also works in the opposite way. If you go into a job interview and you keep telling yourself, I'm not going to get it, I'm not going to get it, you're actually self-sabotaging yourself. So to stay reminded of where you want to go and why you're doing it, you can put up a vision board at home, make a pictures of your goals where you can see them every day. That way you will stay on track. Because visualizing your goals will help you achieve them. So hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Key number three, opportunities. Everything you do opens up new doors for you. Let's say if I wouldn't have the guts to go to Egypt by myself to compete, I never would have met the British Mermaid friends and gone to do aquarium shows in Manchester. So I'm telling you, get out there, participate in activities and meet people because as of right now, you have no clue what that contact or that experience will bring you in the future. So be curious and be kind. Key number four, what is unique about you? You are your own greatest resource. So what is your passion? What is unique about you? What is your contribution to this world? Instead of doing what everybody else is doing, do it with your passion, genuinely, and other people will follow. If you don't know where to start, you can use the SWOT model to figure out what you can work with and what you can improve. Key number five, never stop learning. Learning is not something that is exclusive to the classroom, but rather you learn throughout your life, and you never know when that knowledge will come in handy. So find out what your dream job requires and then acquire that skill and knowledge that's needed. Think of it as a game. You're gaining XP. Uh, I learned what I needed to be able to perform my job with quality over quantity and safely. And to this day, I still evaluate every single mermaid gig. The good things I keep, but I see what I could have done differently or better, and I prove it for the next time. So instead of giving up, learn from your mistakes. A foolish man thinks he knows everything. A wise man knows he doesn't. Key number six, you are more than your job. When I was younger, I thought my job had to be the place where I achieved my dreams. Becoming an artist, becoming a best-selling writer. <clears throat> but now I know that my job can simply be a tool to get there. You can still achieve your dreams in your spare time. Of course, it should still be somewhere where you feel inspired or where you're happy because it's still eight hours a day, right? <clears throat> but you can, for example, work in a supermarket and still become a model or football star or writer outside of work. At least in the beginning, your dream doesn't have to be the one generating money. Key number seven, obstacles. My dad always tells me that when I start bumping into obstacles, that's when I know I'm on the right path. Success is rarely just a straight line, but rather a journey of mistakes as well as trial and error. So 
So the important part is to not give up and to learn from these mistakes. And to be able to pursue your dreams, you must remember why you're doing it. So in times of doubt, you always have something to fall back onto. Because if you're doing it for all the wrong reasons, like somebody else telling you to, because others are doing it, you're much more likely to fail. Your heart has to be in it. So how it started, basic for retail, and doing kids parties for her friends, putting up posters at my local home soon. How it's going, I got my dream title as a silicone, I'm a free diver, I've done aquarium shows, I've represented Sweden. I'm passionate, happy, and empowered. I'm a mermaid princess, an artist, and a writer. And please remember, the distance between dreams and reality is called action. Feel free to follow my journey, there is plenty more to come. Thank you so much for listening.